it is intermission live YouTube live and I am Christian Murray Scant uh, filmmaker actor and um, co-owner of Buckaroo Brothers Productions with Saison Bright. I am talking to you tonight in the projector room. Um, hello. Sadness today. Conrad Brooks died. Um, I, uh, I knew him, I talked to him a couple times, uh, he even signed my book, uh, of, uh, this book right here, let's see here, the Edward, uh, Biography Nightmare of Ecstasy, if we turn the page here, let's see here, you can see it. There's a signature. And, uh, very sad day indeed. One of the last, uh, Edward people. I believe Dolores Fuller is still alive. Uh, but, uh, very sad day. Um, I, uh, I watched, uh, a little bit, uh, well, the last part, the end of the series, uh, Ip Man, the Chinese TV series, so I'm done with it, and in behalf of Conrad Brooks, I watched the documentary that Conrad Brooks did called On the Trail of Ed Wood. Uh, that he did back in, I believe, 90, when they made it. And it's it's a group of people that uh, are kind of well-known in the, in the business as well as being cult status people. Uh, I've, I believe uh, Bert Burkard is his name. Uh, but... Uh, other than that, that's uh, what we uh, that's what we were doing, and I watched Othello tonight, Mr. Orson Welles. Uh, I had a nice little uh, talk with Conrad Brooks. Uh, like I said before on my Facebook Live, I was talking about. Uh, him uh, kind of connecting to the story that I had with an agent in Hollywood. Uh, my co-owner and best friend's agent at the time, Carter Wright, told me this story that Ed Wood went into his, uh, into his office saying it was the best script in the world. Uh, and he needs to read it. And he says, well, I'll read it and I'll, I'll tell you if it's a piece of you-know-what. So he came back the next day, he read it a couple of days, and then uh, maybe it was a couple of days, a couple of days. And uh, it was a piece of you-know-what. And he told him to get out of his office, basically. Said basically, Carter Wright says, if it's a piece of you know what, uh, I'll tell you to get out of my office and don't come back. So he did, and he started crying. He says he was basically saying, "I do the best I can," and Ed Wood that is, and uh, when I talked to Conrad Brooks years later. He told me that that's probably why he was crying to begin with. And, uh, 
it's it was uh That's probably why he, he was doing it in the coffee shop. He, he had left uh, Carter Wright. So I think he just left Carter Wright. Uh, Carter Wright has now passed away as well. But um, it was kind of an interesting story and a connected story in a way with Conrad Brooks. Um, he was a nice guy. Uh, he was always positive, as a, as a Mr. Lobo said. Unless you brought up money, and then if you brought up money, he would he would try to get the money. But but that was Conrad Brooks for you, more money than he said he was gonna get. But uh, he was a good man and a good act. Good well, he was a good uh, actor to 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 the craft in the way where you shouldn't stop trying. And uh, at that point, you know, you kind of uh, realize also uh, that he was uh, he was uh, an artist to the craft of being uh, being in the filmmaking business in many ways, and uh, also trying to get certain things done, uh, and no matter what anybody really said, and that's what the kind of philosophy that Ed Wood had. Um, he was up for, uh, my warlock role when I originally did my first film and, uh, he wanted more money, uh, the, he was trying to raise the price for, in the, in the, in the money situation and he really wasn't, uh, at that uh, time in the element to ask for more money and the, my producer at the time kind of said no so still became his friend still wanted to do projects with him in the, in the future uh, but uh, it never came to be and uh, he uh, was a uh, person that lived in Hollywood all his life, but he moved to West Virginia because of his daughter. And uh, he was also this great showman, if you could say so. I believe that that's how I would describe him. The greatest showman ever alive to 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 be in the in the in the words of uh, fame that threw us threw us away in a way and kind of spitted us back out. So my best to his family and him and um also, my best to uh, his soul. I, 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 I hope God got him straight up um, in heaven, you know. I think he deserved it. Uh, the documentary I watched of him was one of my favorite documentaries on the trail of Ed Wood, and it's just basically him describing Ed Wood and uh, him going on different places where he was originally uh, originally uh, living at, at least 
these were uh, basically met Bedwood at, and uh, and he went on through his career this whole entire life, and why Plan Nine was so important to him too. It really wasn't his favorite movie at first, but it, it just kept on playing that night. Um, I will admit, in some way or another, uh, in some way or another, Um, that, uh, it was a, uh, great philosophy of what Hollywood was like in the 90s. Uh, if you remember going there in the 90s, if you were alive back then, uh, it was one of those places where you saw it never changing, and it still is like that in a lot of ways, too. Um, it also showed uh, that the places where it would lived at were still there. So... Uh, if you just look, you can find him over there, you know. But uh, I uh, enjoyed it. I think it was one of those great uh, documentaries. I mean, for a while, it wasn't even you couldn't even get it in uh, mainstream stores or Amazon or anything like that. You had to go to San Francisco and get it. And that's why I originally saw it. I saw it in San Francisco. So, um, I basically was, uh, was, uh, it was surprised when it was on DVD with one of his movies. So, it was with, uh, I think, uh, Gypsy Vampire. So, uh, I'll, I'll miss my friend. He was a good friend. And, um, uh, he was also a great person to listen to, too, about Ed Wood. Uh, he told me basically a story about uh, when he first met Ed Wood also in the coffee shop and when he first met Bella Lugosi too. So in that aspect, I'm going to leave it in a positive note like Mr. Lobo said he was because... He was a very positive person. He really did love uh, his craft, no matter what it was. And uh, I enjoyed him as a person and as an as a as a low budget guy. Um, but um. The second part to Orson Welles, um, and yes, it is a second part to Orson Welles. Orson Welles uh, did did a movie back in the fifties called Othello, but it really started in nineteen forty nine. Um, I uh, remember it back in the day in the 90s, and you couldn't really see it unless it was in particular showings for a while. And um, 
I watched the 1955 version or the 19 the reinstored version of it, the one that had the two minute version on it, two minutes more than it was, and uh, there's a doc. There was a documentary on it that was uh, by um, the girl who played. Desimona, who was also married to Peter Ustinov, believe it or not. Now, if you don't know who Peter Ustinov was, he was uh, the guy that almost played Inspector Clouseau, but turned it down and gave it to Peter Sellers. Um, but he was also... Uh, the guy who... Uh, was also known to play Poirot originally. And uh, if you remember back in the 70s, he would play Poirot in three or four films. But uh, I'll get to Peter Ustinov another day, but this, this woman was married to Peter Ustinov. But she was talking about her relationship with Orson Welles and how he was really uh, struggling with the film on how it was a um, aspect of uh, his life and who he really was. Um, I guess he had money problems like all filmmakers really do. But... Uh, you kind of saw it to the point where uh, where uh, where he was uh, trying to uh, finish it, but then he then also he would have these different locations each time, so it'd be a whole different world. Of uh, of Orthello in a lot of ways, and what do I think of or Orthello and Orson Welles' interpretation of Orthello after I watched his film after so many years? Uh, it was his own version, but you you got the the aspects of what the language was in Shakespeare. Um, I had. Uh, I had I had uh, fun watching Orson Welles doing his thing, um, and there was a lot of changes too. He he, he with the Turkish bath that was filmed in Africa actually, and Morocco. Uh, they were all filmed in either in Morocco and Africa, usually and in Europe also at Italy and. And also, uh, I think a little bit of it was filmed in France, too. But, um... It went on to two, these two different documentaries that, in the end there. And, um... About how she loved him and tried to help him with his, with the, with his future projects. And wouldn't talk to him for a while. Or she wouldn't talk to her. It was going back and forth on their whole relationship. And he also talked about his last film, too. Uh, the End of Wind. Which is uh, being finished as we speak. Um, which is kind of cool, in my opinion. Um, but, uh... He, she she described the plot to in a way about a director that was trying to find himself and almost I think he dies at the end. So she kind of said Orthello was more like him, and it kind of expressed him to what he was. Um, also, believe it or not. The Criterion Collection has the movie I was trying to find for so many years. The Orson Welles movie that I was trying to find for so many years. Um, 
It was called Return to uh, Return to uh, Malagascar Gore Corosco and it, or a ghost story. I think it was it was it, I think it was called that. But we'll just say a ghost story because that's how the other turn, turned the name to it. Uh, it has him starting in the beginning of it uh, with uh, Peter Bogdanovich doing the intro. And the intro is him talking about uh, how this is like a film. Um, Than love, you know, and uh, Force and Wells, and that this hasn't really been shown since 1949, and in between, uh, Orthello, he he did this, you know, and all his other stuff. Uh, so I was very excited to see Peter Bogdanovich in it as well. Um, also, also, uh, it's one of my favorite Orson Welles ghost, only ghost story that he did. Um, uh, and I, I kind of think that, uh, he kind of brought up, uh, a whole different aspect to what the ghost story is and how the ghost story belongs. Um. I uh, I was very surprised to see it. I enjoyed seeing it again after so many years. I saw it at the Crest Theater in the 90s, many years ago. So, uh, very excited to see it. And uh, it, had a, it had a little aspects to him driving the car and meeting the guy and taking him back to the house that this guy ran into but in a way I think in a way he, he was the he was the new ghost what do you think and there's a there's a long running uh, joke in it uh, aren't you that guy aren't you him you know Meaning, aren't you Arson Wells? And he goes, yes. <laughs> My distributors won't do anything about it, though. That's what he said. <laughs> so, uh... I'm going to make this a part three at another time. I'm going to call it quits for now. I was too busy talking about Conrad go into Orson Welles, but that's what I saw. I'm going to try to find out the last part of the name for you guys. Uh, I had the name in my head, uh, but the alternative name is A Ghost Story, because uh, it is a ghost story. I was surprised to see a ghost story from Orson Welles. So uh, I'm going to call it quits for now. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit later. Signing off for now, Christian Murray Scant, co-owner of Buckaroo Brothers Productions. Bye. And oh yeah, remember to live art, film, and music.